This album would not exist if not for two major perspective shifts. 2020 was a difficult year for everyone, but while the world was dealing with a global pandemic, I was having an internal struggle. I've been pursuing music seriously for over a decade. Back in 2011, I was in high school spending my weekends in neighboring cities hustling CDs, entering every cipher I could find, and setting up local shows in the hopes of one day taking a bigger stage. I was obsessed. In the mornings before school, I would download beats onto my iPod Nano before heading to the bus stop. Every day I wrote two to three verses during class and counted the seconds until I could make it home to record. It was a burning passion for music that drove me, an insatiable desire to make music my full-time job. And one day I'll tell the full story, but for brevity's sake, let's fast forward to 2019. I did it. I quit my corporate marketing job for good and I'm finally making a full-time salary off of music. But as time went on, the mounting pressure of the business needs fell on me. I was laser focused on streaming data, content, delivery schedules, etc. And after a year and a half of keeping my head in the sand, I popped out only to discover that my love for music was drifting away. I laid these thoughts and feelings out of my song, No Stuff, missing the blissful ignorance I once felt, tasting some success, but finding no enjoyment in the flavor. And even after the release, these thoughts lingered in my mind for weeks. I felt lethargic, unmotivated, and for the first time, aimless in my career. A month later, I stumbled upon a Taz Taylor IG Live video. The way he was speaking about the music industry and the creation of internet money's hits sparked perspective shift number one. The reward wasn't the money. If it was, why would I have picked one of the hardest ways to make it? The reward was getting to make music. And if I lose the passion for that, then I lose everything. And in that moment, I decided to prioritize fun, shifting my focus from business building to protecting the sanctity of my passion for creating. A couple days later, I was sharing these thoughts with my friend Mowgli. We discussed how our music was not on par with mainstream artists. Travis Scott, for example, had better beats and vocal production, vocal performances, better mix and master, etc. I had always made most of my own beats and engineered myself, but Mowgli brought up the point that 30 plus people touched sicko mode. And here comes realization number two. As an independent artist, I've always been stubborn and protective over my splits, which has served me well in getting to this point. But what if the key to reaching new levels of artistry is inviting others to contribute their specialized talents? What if I had been so protective of my splits that I was deterring them from entering my circle? And how much fun would it be to explore new levels of creativity through collaboration? These two realizations culminated into a clear plan. Let's book a three-story condo in Nashville, fly out some stupid talented artist friends of mine, and have a blast making music together for a week. But I knew that everyone needed a piece of the pie to contribute their talents to the project. Thus, I let them know that there would be pie at the party. And the rest is history. Most of you buses are fake. I don't know how much more I can, more I can, look at my rank. This, this is not up for debate. Gas, gas in the tank. She called me President Nate. 